I ain't gonna expose. I'm not like that. I'm not a snitch. Virginity. Yeah. Hush, hush, stop. Yeah. They love me. Let's see if your parents raise you. It's deeper than the physical. What up, fam? Yes. <laughs> Welcome back to the juxtaposition, everyone. Welcome back to the Juxtaposition Podcast. I'm your host, Nana. Um, let me do that again. <laughs> Welcome back to the Juxtaposition Podcast. I'm your host, Nana. And as you can see, we don't have my two ladies here like I did in the other video. Today is a different type of video. It's a one-on-one interview with track star jamaican legend asafa powell mm-hmm. how are you doing sir i'm good i'm good it's a brand new year man oh brand man this year. is top of 2022 you know how did your year go 2021 well um i think it went just like everyone else's mm-hmm. you know with the pandemic and with all the you know the madness that's going on mm-hmm. but you know we made it through you know and um i can say um I mean, I'm not disappointed. Yeah, you yeah. know, I had a brand new baby ah. out of 2021. So mm-hmm. we're gonna yeah, get to that. Uh, yeah, I can't complain. So yeah, it's, yeah, it was sure. an awesome year for me. You know, despite the pandemic, it was an awesome year for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I've seen a lot of interviews of you, and you know, a lot of people know you for your track awards and your accolades. You know, but. Let's just get into your upbringing, you know, the because one day you're going to have to do a movie, you know, one day you're going to have to do a docu-series. <laughs> so let's just get some of the stories so when the docu-series come, they can come to this interview and pull some pieces <laughs> out of it. So let's talk about, describe your upbringing. You know, we talked about it a little bit in the car, but <laughs> describe your upbringing and how did you grow up and all that. Um... I'm I'm last of six boys. My mm. both my parents are pastors, mm. so you can imagine I'm in church almost every day. Indeed. So um, I was a church boy yeah. growing up, you know, um, in, a, in Christianity and all that stuff, you know. And, um, I had a good childhood, you know. I was I wasn't exposed to a lot of things, mm. you know. It wasn't until I came to Kingston that was when I, that's when I got exposed to a lot of things you know because um i was kind of sheltered in a sense and being in the country you're kind of sheltered mm-hmm. in a sense because you only get to see bits on, and pieces of pieces. of everything you know yeah. so you know i was very sheltered and i was just a real good boy you know yeah. growing up you know you know I give a little trouble here and there when i go to I, when i went to high school you know and you know knock it with friends and all that stuff but you know i was i was a fairly decent boy growing up so you went to high school in the city or in the country? In the country. In the wow, country. So it everything was, was in the country. Yeah, yeah. So I was a full on country boy. You know, and um, like I said, it wasn't until I came to Kingston, you know. Mm-hmm. I, what age you 17. Come? 17. Yeah, I was seventeen, 17 when I came years. to when I came to university. Yeah. Wow, so you guys never came down here just to like, oh let's visit family, nah, let's stay here nah. for weekends. No, nah, the only family I knew was my immediate family and my cousins that were um, mm-hmm. living in the country, you know, uh, it was fun. You know, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, I think we had way more fun than people than people than kids who grew up in the city. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. way way more fun. You know, so I'm very, you know, happy that I got to experience that kind of childhood. You know, and um, you know, it's the best way. Ah, yeah, that sounds good. So we talk. You talk about your parents being uh, ministers and pastors. So, how do you think, um, what were the challenges and obstacles you had to face as a child? Because hearing about pastors' kids, Mm -hmm. sometimes they feel like they're sheltered, they're too sheltered, they don't have um, um, freedom to do stuff. So, what was your experience like? Um, It was very strict, you know, and um, um, like I said, I didn't know any other way. You know, my parents were very strict. They were very, you know, when they put their foot down, you know, they, they meant it. And um, like I said, church, all I knew was church, school, church, you know, home, yeah. you know, play in the yard, you know, and all that stuff. So my parents, they were very strict, but they were, they were, they were, they were good parents, you know. Mm-hmm. They, um, they brought me up to be yeah. the man, the man I am today, you know, so, you know, I um, love them for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And since you guys were Christians, like... Was it kind of hard to, like, growing up now, is it kind of hard to 
understand your faith or was it is it easier because you have that foundation yeah, yeah it's a lot easier you know because um i have that foundation and i have a lot more knowledge now you know mm -hmm. um you know you can listen to the pastor preach and all that stuff and you know you can just leave the pastor to teach you everything yeah. but you know when you can go out on your own and you know learn a yeah. few things on your own you know, that that's really nothing beating beats knowledge you know yeah. when you when you can learn on your own and you know walk stand on your own two feet yeah, yeah. you know so you know for that type of background you know it, it led me you know into you know a new light you know to really you know experience you know try and go further with my religion with my faith yeah. you know and learn a lot more you know learn you know you know what am i praying about you know what am i praying to you know why am i praying you know, so you get to learn a lot more things mm -hmm. you know? So um, you said you were the last born of six, you're the baby, like I'm the baby of my family. Um, how was it, like what kind of role did your older brothers play? They used to beat you up, toss you around or? No man, I was, um, they protect me to the T man. Like oh, wow. I was, I was like a spoiled child, you know, like oh. all my brothers wanted to be, you know, that brother who, you know, who um, protect me? Yeah, 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 they protected me. So you know, I was very protected. I, I didn't fight with anyone. I was I was too young to, to yeah, fight yeah. with my, my big brothers anyway, man. But we didn't fight. Uh, my brothers, you know, they protected me. We shared clothes. You know, I man, I've I had clothes for years because you know, <laughs> I, just, I had to grow into all you know my brothers' clothes. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so you know I. You know, it was fun, it was fun, you know, my brothers, uh, they played a father role, you know, brother role, friend role, you know, every, everything you can imagine. Yeah, because they probably went through, like, they probably did all the stuff, experienced mm -hmm. the yeah, stuff, man. so when it was your turn, you are probably like, okay, he's not going to do this, he's not going to do that, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we have done it, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, they, 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 they steer me in the, in the right path, you know, and mm -hmm. um, being the last child as well. You know, you you are you are a lot you are you are around your parents a lot more. Mm, yeah, you know, so true, you don't really true. get to go everywhere everywhere with your brothers. Yeah, you know, so true. your parents want to keep you around, you know, just for their own comfort and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, for company as well, yeah, you know, yeah, because you know true. parents get lonely at times, you know, and they want to try and hold on to that last child yeah. as long as possible. Yeah. You know, so I didn't do all of the madness, you know, that my brothers did, but after I got older you know, and where I can, you know, understand, yeah. I started experiencing things on my own. I have a question, because I I was debating <coughs> with my friends about mm -hmm. this a lot. Do you think, wh who do you think in the family is the most pressure? Because I said <coughs> the most pressure falls on the last born mm -hmm. because they look at the last born as like the savior <laughs> yeah, or the they like, it's, it's like, um, the older they did all the the bad stuff, so it's like the last one's like, no, you're not gonna do what they did. So, do you think the last born has it tougher than the first born, or do you think the first born has the most pressure? Well, it depends. You know, it depends because um, you know the first born, mm -hmm. um, there's still pressure on them to as a savior. But the first yeah. one gets coddled. They get coddled. I mean, not really. I don't think so. Okay. I don't, I don't okay. think so. I think the first one get get the tougher end of the stick. Okay. <laughs> I think I, I think the first one, you know, I mean, yeah, the, the love is, the, is a lot of love. Just the same amount of love. Yeah. But, you know, being the, being the last child, they, get, they, they, ba they baby you a lot. Mm. You know, and the first child, you know, they will get all the punishment, all this, you know, and all of that. It's like it's like trial and error with the first one. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and then with the second child, now you know you you're a bit softer. Yeah, you're a bit softer with them, and you know, it's like you you expect you expect a lot more from mm -hmm. them in a sense. So I would say, yeah, the, the, there's a lot more pressure mm. on the last child because they expect a lot more yeah. out of the last child, you know? Yes. Yeah, the first one, oh! Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. one. Then the, the last one now is like, they expect everything. They expect the last one to be the first child mm -hmm. and be the last child, mm -hmm. you know, and be the savior of the, fa of the family, everything, you know? See, you guys heard it. My people in Toronto, the final boss has spoken. The last <laughs> child 
has the most pressure. I'm tell, tell us what you think in the comments because I actually want to hear what you yeah, guys middle, have to say. Middle kids get no pressure. Middle kids, they can do anything yeah, they want. No pressure. No anything. Pressure. Um, so you talked about your brothers. Um, Sorry. Can we talk um, in 2002 and, and 2003? Your brother Michael and Vaughn Powell passed away. Mm -hmm. How did that affect you as a man and the trauma well, that can? Well, cancel that out, right? Cut that out. Um, well, oh, that affected me as yeah. a man. I wasn't even a man then. I was still. How old were you? I was still. I was. I was still a teenager. Wow. I was still a teenager back then. And um man, I didn't I didn't know how to take it because I growing up, you know, you see all your brothers, all your family and yeah. um I didn't even think my brothers could die. Mm. You know, seeing your bigger brothers like death was the last thing on, on your mind, you know. We're kids, we're yeah. we're still growing up, you know. Um, they they both died in their twenties. So, um, you know, that was a big shock for me and at the end of the day it was my eldest brother who who brought me back you know to to reality and mm -hmm. you know put me in 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 the you know on the right track yeah, yeah, yeah. you know because uh, at that time i just started my track and field career yeah. and um i remember that week i had the national trials coming yeah. up for the world championships and um, I was like, yo, I can't do this. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do this. You know, can't. You know, I, could, I just couldn't believe that my brother yeah, died. Yeah. So I just felt like giving up. Mm -hmm. You know, myself. You know, like I got introduced to death in a sense. You know, like I said, my brothers were superheroes to me. Yeah. You know, and uh, man, it was very devastating. And you know, my brother called me and said, hey, this is what they would have wanted mm -hmm. because they were like my two biggest fans. You know, yeah. those two brothers, they were my biggest fans. They were the loudest in the family mm -hmm. and they were the proudest in wow. the family. You know, so they were my biggest fans and I felt like I had nothing to to to, to compete for, to run yeah. for. Why am I running, you know? Yeah. You know, and you know, my brother, you know, steered me in the right way and you know, I went to the trials and I and I, I did well but it was still very tough. Yeah. Like that entire year was a bad, like a baggage on my body. Yeah. You know, and um I uh, I don't think I performed like how, like how I wanted to. You know, I still performed great, but not like oh, you know, I really wanted to because all of that. You know, I was running for them, yeah. and running for them is still a lot of weight. Yeah. You know, I'm carrying on my body. Yeah, because there's some young athletes in like all over the world that face trauma, like mm -hmm. how you face. So how speak on like how do you deal with that mentally and still try to go out and perform? Like what do you do? Like do you what pregame stuff do you do? What do you tell yourself mentally to like kind of like ease the pain or the, the pressure? I mean, it's 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 different for a lot of people. You know? um, like you have people who can take jabs all yeah. day and it doesn't bother them. It mm -hmm. doesn't face them. You have people who are very thin skinned yeah. You know and the slightest thing it just you know gets them like knock out a whack. You know yeah. all the way out. So. Um, there are different ways to deal with it. Like most of the times when um when I'm going to compete, people majority of the athletes listen to music. Mm -hmm. Um but what I do I find I find my comfort zone where I'm most comfortable, where you know I get hype and you mm -hmm. know adrenaline and that's in one of my race cars. Yeah, one yeah, of my yeah. fast cars, you know. Mm -hmm. So I always en envision myself, you know, in one of those cars, like I'm driving one of those cars mm -hmm. and you know Take myself from the competition for even a minute or two, mm -hmm. and put myself in that happy place, and then that just translate into into my into my competition. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's good to know. So we talk about competition a little bit. Can you explain what the Olympics is like? <laughs> that's like one of like every kid's dream. Like, <laughs> first of all, how was it the yeah. feeling knowing you're going to the Olympics? Like that first call, or was someone told you? Like, what did you like do, or what did you say to your family, or how did you feel? Um, man, honestly, um, growing up in this side of the world, you know, it, it, it was very different because um, everywhere else, like in the U.S. and Canada, like they see Olympics as like it's like it's like the 
it's like the biggest thing in the yeah. entire universe. We were in Jamaica, we weren't that great in sports yeah. in a sense. So, you know, nobody was that much excited about Olympics. We, yeah, we used to run track and all that stuff, but nobody mm -hmm. was excited. So when I um, won the national trials 2004, the Olympic trials, and we, we made the Olympic team, like, I was excited, but I didn't know exactly how to feel because yeah. the feedback that you get from the people around you is not like, oh, this is the big, you know, mm -hmm. like, like, like they don't make you feel like you're on top of the world. Yeah, you know, so um, it was kind of different, different in in that sense. A lot of countries, it's it's like that, you know. Mm -hmm. The sport is not that big, so when you compete and you make the team, like, you know, the the country doesn't make it seem like yeah. they, don't, they, they don't put that the like it's a diamond event or whatever yeah. it is, you know. So when um, it wasn't until I got to the Olympic Games is when I started looking around. I was like, "Wow, mm. wow, this is ridiculous." The arena, and yeah, man, it was it was it was crazy, man. It was crazy, and I and that was an experience I will never forget. My first Olympic Games in Greece, I think. So I will never forget that, man. It was amazing, it was very amazing. So what year was that? Uh, two thousand four. Wow. You know, man. so it. it 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 it's something that is hard to to really tell you guys or explain. Yeah, you, you just have, have to experience. you just have to be in, yeah, in the yeah, moment. Yeah. You have to be there to experience it. Like, um, you 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 don't even have to be competing. Mm -hmm. Once you're there in the atmosphere, you know, being around the athletes and being around every all of that excitement, it just it's just a different feeling. It's yeah, just a yeah, really different yeah. feeling. Like, Damn. That is, that is, I really feel yeah, that man, feeling, yeah, to man. be honest. Yeah, man, I'm at, that's the biggest stage, you know, in, in sports, yeah, you know, yeah, in, yeah. in any sports, that's the biggest stage for any athlete. And I think about it like this, it's like you train all these years mm -hmm. for a nine second race, a, nine a second ten race. second yeah. race, and you only have to pray to God mm -hmm. that your hamstring does not pull, yeah, yeah. that you do not, like, that is, that is nuts, uh, how you athletes, like track runners, like can go out there and be like okay everything i worked on mm -hmm. let's trust and see what's gonna happen because yeah. some people can even have bad starts yeah they and it's not because they're slow it's just because what yeah, happened people, you know yeah, people train people train for four years and and go to the big games and like even before they start competing they feel up they feel a cramp or oh, something yeah. and the olympic games just over for them over you know so it's it's like like you said you know um you know, for, for people with you know who are not mentally mm -hmm. strong, like that can really mess you up, man. That can mm -hmm. take a toll on your on, on, on your mental state, man. Because mm -hmm. you know, imagine people that are not mentally strong and they train and go to the Olympic Games and boom, mm -hmm. yeah, you go out on the track and it's life flat on the track face yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. You know, how do you deal with that? Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't know how to deal with that. Yeah. You know, so it, it man, it's. it's 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 a sport that once any sport so once you get in, yeah, you just have to make up your mind and you have to be prepared for the disappointment, the challenges, and you know yeah. all the glory and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, just have to prepare for anything. You can't just go in and say, "Hey, this is all I want and this is what after I've been in my first race." Yeah. No, you have to be patient and you know just expect you know a lot of disappointment and you know. Just, just, it's, 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 it's a step, you know, you climb up yeah, a ladder, yeah, yeah. you know, and the higher you go, you, the, the, yeah. the more successful you get. Real time. So, yourself, Johan Blake, Usain Bolt, Nesta Carter, mm -hmm. why was that group so special? Mm -hmm. Michael Freita. Can't forget about yeah. him as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, um, I, I don't know, man, it, it, that, 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 um, that era of um, athletes, man, it's something special, man. Something um, different in the water. It's different, man, and the, the chemistry that we, we all had back then, it was, it, <coughs> sorry. the chemistry we all had back then, man, was, was different, man, and we were so hungry. Yeah. Man, we were, we were hungry, man, we, we wanted it, you know, mm -hmm. and um, we, see, we saw this as a way out, you know, because, I mean, we, we didn't grow up, you know, rich, or you know anything we weren't suffering but mm -hmm. we we didn't grow up um seeing um money like that mm -hmm. so we were we were super hungry man and we wanted it man and we were having fun 
Yeah. You know, we're having a lot of fun. You know, um, I think nowadays, you know, the kids are they they put too much pressure on themselves, taking it too serious. Yeah. You know, they forget about the fun part. Yeah, it's a very serious sport and all that stuff. But man, you have to have fun. Man, you have to have fun, and that's what get people to really like you. Yeah. You know, when they see that you're having fun and you love what you do, mm -hmm. you know, that's 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 what that's what that, I think that what, that's what was different, man. We, mm -hmm. we were hungry and we were just having a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys were different. <coughs> how how did you deal with the criticism? Um, after races, when you didn't perform well as a group, as an individual, how did you deal with the criticism all over the world or even in your own land, Jamaica? <coughs> um, the criticism, um, you have to expect it. You know, it's like, it's like you, you, you expect to go out on the track, break a world record, win Olympic Games and not be famous. You, yeah. have, you have to expect it. You have yeah. to expect to be famous. You have to expect everything to come with it. Not everybody's gonna love you, not everybody's gonna like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you have people who just look at you and just don't like you. Yeah. Some people will see you laughing and having a lot of fun and they just don't like it, mm -hmm. you know. They, some people see you too serious, they don't like it. So you can't, you can't please everybody, yeah, yeah. you know. And, um, but for me, I, I mean, it, it hurts when I, when I compete and I don't get the results that, you know, I, I expected or, or what I wanted, but, um, it's results that results that I wanted. I don't I don't care what anybody else wanted. Yeah. You know, yeah, they yeah. they are not the ones out there on the track. Mm -hmm. They don't know what I'm feeling on that day. Yeah. They don't know what I ate for breakfast that morning. Yeah. They know they don't know how hard I train mm -hmm. to to be where I'm at. So why a bad race and somebody somebody's coming going to change how I feel or what I do? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm the one out there, so. Um, I mean, I, I I ignore people, man. I ignore people. I can't train, man. Tra I'm I'm out on the track training for nine months a year, mm. nine months a year oh, to compete, man. to compete at the biggest stage, and there are days when, when like you tear a hamstring, you tear a groin muscle, mm -hmm. you you're on the track throwing up, you know the training so hard you get headaches. You get cramps here and there. You have to wake up 5 a.m. in the morning, and and you don't break. You're still there, mm -hmm. and somebody's gonna make one comment and you break. No, man, I'm too tough for that. Nah, no, yeah, I'm too, right. I'm too tough for that, man. I I, I work think too, of it like man, that, man. Yeah. I work too hard for that, man. Like my my hamstring should be the one, should mm -hmm. be the thing that 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 breaks that you. tear that breaks yeah. someone. Not some not not one person. Or people's comment. People's opinion. That is so true. Yeah, I mean, they were the ones who asked me to go and compete. Yeah. It was my decision, it was my, my choice. You know. Young people, take note. That is gems right there. So let's switch gears a little bit, come close to end. In 2019, you married Alicia Powell. Mm -hmm. How is that? experience oh, retiring man. your jerseys in the raft ah. it's over um, man that was the that was the biggest uh, the best um step i've ever made in my life mm. you know what i mean love my career um very successful and i'm very happy but believe me man um the day i met my wife was that Number was one. yeah man that was Woo. that was that was the the, the, the icing on the cake, you know, mm. um, and that's been a great experience, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, other people, other marriages have their ups and downs, you know. Yeah. But I'm happy to say that our our ups are way more than our downs, you know. Mm. Like you know, ninety percent time we're up, you know. And, you know, you have a little disagreement here yeah. and there, but nothing, you know, nothing like that. We we are. I mean, she's my soulmate, man. Mm -hmm. Like we, we love the same things. She laugh at my jokes. I laugh at her jokes. We, we get up and we will say the same things. Like mm -hmm. we're very compatible, and yeah. you know, with her background and my background, it's kind of similar. Yeah. But it's it's very interesting, you know, to to know your, your African um, roots. You know, she's from Africa. I'm from Jamaica, and I mean, we're all Africans. Yeah. But, um, to really get to learn your real, real culture, you know, yeah. and learn it from her. You know. For my people out there, I think people know, but he's fifty percent Nigerian. Yeah, so yeah. He's a Niger boy, you yeah, know. Man, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
Niger yeah. boy, you know. Niger boy. That's a trip I need to make, you know. Mm. Ghana first. Ghana, Ghana first. Ghana first, then Niger yeah. second. Go to Niger. So you're um, a father of four. Mm -hmm. What's one thing you want your children to have that you didn't have? Um, I mean, I just want them to have the opportunity to to to, to get the best of everything. Mm -hmm. Get the best of everything. I want to provide for my kids, make sure that they are never in need of mm -hmm. anything. They don't have to they don't need to beg, they need to mm -hmm. you know, and but I need them to really work hard yeah, yeah, yeah. for for what they want and um, not have it handed out to them, mm -hmm. you know. But at this, at the same time, I don't want to ever want anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's real talks, real talks. So, Asafa, what's next, man? Next, my next after next, I'm making the step into the business world, man. Mm, I see. To, yeah, man. Uh, I mean, I've been around track and field so long. Yeah. Um, I really want to give back to the sport in a sense where, you know, even with my coaching, yeah. Yeah, because other people always ask me to teach them how I run, you know, and um, I mean, I have pretty much the best technique out there, yeah. the best start, best execution out there, you know, so I would really love to teach that back to, you know, a lot of people, you know, both home and abroad, mm -hmm. you know, so I want to give back to the sport in that sense, but believe me, man, I've been around the sport so long, I just want to break. Yeah. You know, I want a break, you know, and yeah. um, just to live for a little bit, even before I go into the business world and start, you know, um, my own businesses and doing everything. I want, I just want a break, want my mind to yeah. reset, you know, and uh, to just to make that transition over, man. But yeah, man, definitely going into business, you know, I want to give back to the sport, like I said, yeah. you know, but you have to make that transition. So, yeah, my time here in Jamaica has been amazing, but his love for cars is <laughs> different, man. Sometimes we'd be driving and it's like he's a NASCAR speed racer. <laughs> so, tell me a little bit about your love for cars. Like, where did it come from? Oh, man. Um, growing up as a kid, my father used to always have um, some car in the yard that is not working. Mm. You know, so he's, yeah. he's always working on it, always trying to get it to run. And I'm always there with him, you know, he, he, he's the father who has never left. Like he had me on his side everywhere he goes. And that's everywhere. like a meek. A meek is literally yeah. on his, yeah. his, his leg. Just yeah. like this, learning everything from his dad. Yeah, man. So, so yeah, I, I learned that from him, you know. It's like you learn a bit more. The, the older you get, you learn more and more. And I mean, the love just started there. And um, the minute I could afford a car, I bought one. Mm -hmm. And you know, then you know, it just kept. I mean, I've always wanted cars, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so it's like I have a genuine love for cars. Not, it's not like most people where they have money, so they feel like they have to buy tens of thousands yeah, of yeah, cars, yeah, yeah. you know. And I mean, my cars are like, it's not like Ferraris. I mean, I've owned all of those before, yeah. you know, and uh, but that's not what I really love. I love yeah. cars that I can get dirty and get greasy mm -hmm. on, you know, so. That, that, that I have a genuine love, genuine nah, love for really, cars, really man. Do. Genuine Stop love for life. cars. Yeah, man. Nah, you really do. So, can we go see some of the cars you've yeah, been working yeah, on? Yeah, man. I'm not sure if you have. I mean, I, I don't have a quarter of them here. Doesn't. Uh, trust me. <laughs> has a smidge. Uh, we have, <laughs> have a, a, a small number of them here. But, yeah, man. I'm sure. Alright, let's go see that. Please. 1971 Chevy Malibu. And this car I brought, from, brought back from nothing. It was all rust. Rot, rotted out. He brought it back to life? Yeah. So it was all rotted out. I bring it back right to life, you know. And, you know, maybe one day we'll go for a ride. Let's see under the hood. Yeah, okay. so. Damn. So you put this in yourself? Yeah, man. I did, did all of this. All of this. How but long did it take? It's hard to find time. That's why it's taking so long. Oh, still because, not ready yet? Yeah, it's, it's not fully ready. It's almost. Oh, I mean, it's pretty. Okay. It's driving, but. Um, it's not to my liking as yet, you know. Oh, okay. But I mean, with with training and all that stuff, it was very hard to find time to work on the cars. I might find a two or three hours yeah. a day, yeah. but it's, it's very tough, you know. So how long did it take you to finish this? Um, about ten years. Ten years? Yeah, man, about ten years, man. Long, long, long. long. Wow. Yeah. Alright, let's go to the second one. I mean, this is a 
This one, as you see, is a smart car. <laughs> and I'm doing something that is not very smart. I'm putting a bigger engine in it to make it go faster. So it, the wheelies and all that stuff. So. Are you serious? I never heard nothing like that in my life. So there's an engine. So that's why it's been like this. Yeah, yeah. And you just put it in the back. Yeah. yeah. How long did this take you? Man, this, uh, this is a work in progress. Um, I started this 2014. So this is, this is like a fun car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, did I start this 2014? No, I started this in the pandemic. I started this. Oh. Yeah, in um in COVID, I got bored and started this. So you just bought this from someone? Where did you no, get it? I I've had this for years. Oh. But then I, I got bored, like I said, and I just messed it up, messed up <laughs> the good good car, man. Okay, let's go to my favorite one. Oh, nah, I didn't I didn't pull the cover yet because you know I wanted to. Yeah, so guys. Um, this is 1989 Mercedes 190E Cosworth and you know I bought it off a guy who had it you know um, just destroying it and I bought it two days two days a day um, after I met my wife Oh wow! Twenty fifth, yeah, twenty fifteen. Wow. So like, I'm, it's like she flew in. That's a good week. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. So, and this is actually her favorite car. So yeah, she, yeah, yeah, she, she, she can unveil so this so one. She wants, she wants to drive this one. This one, legit. Yeah. Yeah, she loves old school cars, you know. Y T. Paint is different on this one. Oh my goodness! Check out the interior! Yeah. Jeez. Still, still work in progress, you know? Mm. But this is going to be Alicia and Eva. Mm -hmm. Eva, Eva P! Eva rolling Fifth around. Forever. Rolling yeah, around. Look at the paint Inspire. job on this, bro. Nah, this car is different, actually. What? And that's Ami. That's Ami. Ami! I know this car. This, this one is my favorite too. Let's move this out. Of it. So this is a CLK Mercedes CLK. What year is this? Black Series, and it's a 2008, and they only made 500 of these. So this is a collector's item. Only 500. The only one in the Caribbean, and you won't really see TVs around. So this is actually this is a beast, yeah. This one's fast, right? Yeah, yeah, this one is super fast. Yeah, fast. Look at the wheels on this. Yeah. Nah, this is fire, man. Yeah. And I tell you what, for another interview, I'll show you the others. I have, I have um, more in the garage, down, way down the hill. But uh, I don't What's that car you say you have in the garage? Um, yeah, Acura the NSX. Yeah, and I have a GTR in the garage. Yeah. Rent again, this is yeah. just a smidge, yeah, 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 yeah. a speck of dust on his collection. And how many so, cars you, have you said you owned? Well, I've owned, um, well, at one time I had um, like 20 something cars. Damn. At one time, and yeah, I had to, over the years, you know, I started detaching myself from them oh. and just selling, selling them out. When I met Alicia, I had um, 17. 17? Yeah, I had 17 cars. And, yeah. Where did you fit them? I mean, I had them just lying around the yard. <laughs> you know, all all about in the yard. Like, I had cars bump to bump. I had seven cars in here. Oh. Because I put that one way over and I had oh, seven okay. cars in here. Then I had cars just all around the yard. Wow. Um, got rid of those, you know? <laughs> And then you got the Toyota. The yeah, yeah. I really like that one, I to be the, honest. The everyday. That's a really good one. Yeah, I mean, everyday I mean, car. Yeah. The older you get, the smarter you get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, being here in Jamaica, like, with the hills and all that stuff, we need something that is fuel efficient. Yeah, so this yeah. is perfect on gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. Anyways, thank you. You got it there, folks. Exclusive car collection, a South of Paul. On the Juxtaposition Podcast, there's three of us. We're based in Toronto. Um, we talk about Christ and culture together. So check us out. Watch our videos. Um, thank you once again. Yeah, no problem, I appreciate man. it no problem, a lot. No problem. This is a great interview. You go do the rest, and we're out of here. Peace.